Hey guys, thank you for joining us for another men's Bible brief. If you can join us on Wednesday mornings, the information is on the screen. If not, we got you covered on YouTube right here. Well, let's go ahead and join the brief in progress. God bless you. Different kind of humpback food for thought today. Uh, and it comes from Isaiah 55, 11. Mm. My word will not return to me empty, but will accomplish. Going to our speaker for today, coming straight out of California, the NIA, who pastors Footstep Ministries in Rialto, California. He's none other than the father of my wife, who has become my father as well. And fathers, I will present to you none other than Pastor Cardell Napier. Take it away and pray us in, Pastor Napier. All right. Good morning, gentlemen. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for this time in your word. We believe that everything we do is sanctified and set apart from the world and that we seek to move ourselves away from the worldly things that bring us down, but embrace the word of God and understand the principles which allow us to be safe in every situation that we encounter. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're going to have your way today illuminate our minds and hearts so that we understand and we are able to apply the word of God and we get something that we can walk away with. We thank you in advance what you're about to do, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, uh, gentlemen, I'll be covering the subject, of, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I'll be covering the subject of purity this morning. One of the things that God placed on my heart when, when Chris asked me to do this was that we need to sharpen our, our purity. We need to understand that um, it's not upon our women to be pure, but it's upon us men to be pure. <clears throat> Excuse me, suddenly my throat is uh, acting a little crazy. Um, I'm going to be talking about the purity of men. I've <clears throat> I'm using a book called Disciplines of Godly Men, or Disciplines of a Godly Man, um, by Mr. Hughes. And I'll make that title available to you. Uh, his name is R. Kent Hughes. Um, and so there are a number of disciplines we have to master as we grow in Christ. I'm not going to cover all of them, but I want you to be aware of them. We're going to talk about the discipline of purity today. But there is a discipline of marriage, there is a discipline of fatherhood, a discipline of friendship, a discipline of mind, discipline of devotion, a discipline of prayer, worship, integrity, tongue, work, perseverance, leadership, giving, witness, ministry, and there is a grace of discipline. Today we're going to talk about the discipline of purity. And I'm going to be using David as a backdrop, the story of David. Many of us understand what happened to David, but I want to focus in on the steps that the enemy used to take him down. A lot of times people um, think that it was just hap it happened right away, but it did not happen right away. The first thing we want to talk about is the word desensitization, desensitizing, being desensitized. Um, I have a scripture, if we have time to turn there, Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 14 through 17. The uh, David was already in sin before he even saw Bathsheba because he had be, been de desensitized. The Bible tells us in those verses that, um, that God was going to give them a king, but there were some rules governing kingship. And one of the rules governing kingship, and this is found in Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 14 through 17. What it says there is that God was going to give them a king, but in giving them a king, he set forth some rules governing kings. And one of them was that you couldn't have too many horses and you couldn't have multiple wives. So when David's issue happened, um, he already was in violation of the word and what desensitized him was that he had already a concubine and more than one wife. He already violated the scripture. And so uh, the first thing we as men have to be careful of, especially in the type of world we live in today, you can't allow yourself to get desensitized to what's going on. 
The enemy is looking for any opportunity to kill your purity, especially if God has called men to be leaders. If he can get us to be unclean, it taints our leadership and causes us to fail. I didn't read the scripture. Uh, does anybody um, have the scripture would like to read it? Uh, it says, when you enter the land which the Lord your God gives you, you and you possess it and live in it, and you say, I will set a king over me like all the nations who are around me, you shall surely set a king over you whom the Lord your God chooses. One from among your countrymen you shall set as a king over yourselves. You may not put a foreigner over yourself who is not your countryman. Moreover, he shall not multiply horses for himself, nor shall he cause the people to return to Egypt to multiply horses, since the Lord has said to you, you shall never again return that way. He shall not multiply wives for himself, or else his heart will turn away, nor shall he greatly increase silver and gold for himself. Right. So he's already broken the law by having a concubine. He, he was, wasn't supposed to that. So he's in sin already, but desensitized to women. So when he sees Bathsheba, he doesn't think anything's wrong with it. He already has several women uh, in the cut, as you say. And so he he allowed that, that that is the first thing that allows him to make the mistake. The second thing, I know you've talked about this before, is relaxation. We have jobs to do for the body. There's a time when we have to take vacation or rest time. Be careful when you relax, have a beer, be with friends, do things that, that you like, because the enemy doesn't take a break. And when you are relaxing is when he's going to step up his attack. We know that David was home from, from the war. He's doing his relaxation. And of course, his, not, his mind is now free to look at the, the worldly things around him and desire them. We know that relaxation leaves him, brings him into a place where he's thinking about something that he shouldn't be thinking about, which is the discipline of minds. We have to control our minds and not let our thoughts run away because the next step is fixation. And all of us as men know what that's, what that's like, especially if you see a good looking woman. And I, I fear there's all, I think there's only men on here. So you guys know what I'm talking about when you see something that really looks good. If you don't control your mind, you will think about that even after that person has left your presence. That's called fixation. And it's one of the, the first steps that the enemy will use. He will get you thinking about what you saw and what you think you might want to do there. And that fixation leads you into, um, it further furthers the desensitization, desensitizing your spirit and your mind so that you're focused on something that's not yours. Um, I have a, a saying, and I've been doing this for a lot of years, if it's not mine, I don't want it, uh, no matter how good it looks. And I, I, I tell the men, men of our church, if you really want to see your flesh scream, the next time you see a clad or, or cladly dressed young lady or someone that's really beautiful, force yourself to look away. You'll find that your spirit, if it's not right, will scream and try to make you look because it's trying to desensitize you so that it can get you into fixation. Once you get the fixation, the next thing is rationalization. David rationalized why he could be with Bathsheba. Some of the thoughts in the book that I read talked about uh, rationalization is when we say, wait a minute, I'm out of town. Nobody's going to know what I did. But fellas, the, the word of God tells us that every creature under heaven is naked before God. And that's in Hebrews 4.13. God sees everything we do. But the rationalization that the devil brings is, in this case, Uriah is out at war. He can't be that good of a husband because he's at war all the time. And so when you start to rationalize and think about how you can get away with this thing, Satan has now got you into the, the, the last step. And then the, the, the next step is degeneration. Degeneration happens when your moral and spiritual character that the Holy Spirit has deposited in you and all your feelings take over and start to lead the train. I also have another saying, I don't let my emotions run the train. My emotions are intact, which is what saving a soul does. If you're saved, then you're, the Holy Spirit should be running the train, not your feelings and your emotions. 
And that's, that is the last step, of the, uh, which is degeneration. He brings you down to the worldly level. And then after feeling the, the conscious come in and kick in, it's easy for you then to make that transition to do what is not holy and not right. And it kills your purity. A lot of times guys think that Satan is trying to ruin their marriage. No, he's trying to ruin you. If he ruins you, he can get your marriage. And so we as men have to make sure that we are focused on the purity of the sanctity of God inside of us. We don't violate the Holy Spirit. We let him lead the train. And if it's not yours, don't touch it. Leave it alone. That uh, ends uh, what I want to share today. I think the questions that uh, I've sent to Chris uh, are going to further the conversation and really give us something to think about uh, as we put this into action.